Unfortunately, our general fund budget, which relies heavily on sales tax and property tax, um, has some challenges that go along with that. We've seen the manner in which people shop change, which has affected our sales tax revenue. Um, we've seen what the recession can do for us with property tax and see us lose revenue that provides the services that our community expects. We see that trend continuing into the future and to ensure that we're fiscally responsible and we're providing the services that the community needs, the council has asked us to take a deeper look at how we fund our services, um, what are the services that are important to the community, and make sure we come back with a balanced budget every year, which is forcing us into some tough choices. This effort actually started last October at the Council's Goals Workshop where we started having a more of an in-depth discussion about where we were fiscally. And the Council at that time felt it was very important that we engage the community in that discussion, that this not be a staff-driven effort or a Council-driven effort. It's really engaged the community at large. This last month, we came to the Council with the formation of a Community Priorities Advisory Committee, or Engage Roseville as we're um, calling it. And the purpose for that is to really engage the community on what the services are that we provide, what the cost of those services are, and how they would prioritize those if we needed to make reductions going forward. At the end of the day, the goal is we need to match our expenses with our revenues. We're not going to spend any more money in a given year than we bring in in a given year, and we want to make sure that we're fiscally stable today, and we're also setting a framework so that we can be fiscally sustainable 5, 10, 15 years in the future. That's what our community expects of us, and that's what we're charged to do. Our labor groups have partnered with us in looking at how can we start controlling some of our long-term costs, how can we slow growth, how can we make sure that we're all engaged in trying to solve this problem. And I'm very pleased with what our labor groups have done and that they've looked at how they can pick a bigger cost of their pension, how they take a bigger role in paying for their um, health coverage going forward how they can slow growth uh, with respect to how salaries are set. And actually, in some cases, reducing salaries by, for some of the positions by as much as 21%. So I think staff has done quite a bit in trying to control those things that we have the ability to control. There's a lot of things that we can't control, and those are the things that um, cause us pause in looking at how we're going to address these issues going forward. And what are some of those things? Um, state mandate's always a big one that comes up, and the state continually looks at services that they provide that they can no longer afford to do and look at cities to provide those services for them. Well, during the recession, what the city did and what a number of organizations across the state did is they borrowed against their reserves in order to maintain service levels, thinking this would be a short-term event and we'd be able to recover quickly. Unfortunately, it lasted much longer, and it showed to all of the cities across the state how vulnerable we are to any kind of dip in revenue. And during that time frame, we lost over $50 million in revenue. And so that was funds that we borrowed from our reserves that we need to pay back. Um, in order to pay those back and then continue to grow the services that we have has proved to be a challenge for us and has created the, this issue that we're in today.